Welcome back to the 2023 OTB Open presented by MVP Disc Sports. Man, it's a hot one out here in Stockton, California at Swenson Park. I'm Andrew Fish, joined here by Nathan Queen. Yeah, and I am up here in Portland. It got hot up here as well. Uh, I can only imagine the temperatures you've got a little farther south from here. Uh, beautiful, beautiful ball golf course that we've got here with lots of shade, though. So maybe some shade hopping going on with our players. And you see Aaron Gossage, Adam Hammes, and Vino Makala all at eight down to begin. And Drew Gibson uh, leading the charge at seven with a whole bunch of other folks in the mix and uh, chasing Isaac Robinson after his round one hot round. Yeah, and then uh, three players at nine down just behind him. So uh, as we've seen previously on tour, uh, cluttered up scores here, getting into Aaron Gossage's bag, putting with the challengers, going to see some zones and buzzes for the upshots. Captain Raptors, uh, Nukes and Forces also has one of those Venoms in his bag. Adam Hammes here putting with the P-line focuses. Gonna see some upshots with the Malta and Wasp, but a bit different from some other Discraft players. Gonna see Athena and Forces mostly for his upshots, and the Nuke as well. Vino Makala, sponsored by Prodigy. You see he's gonna throw some PA3s and putt with them as well. Uh, I expect he's gonna skip over mid-ranges for the most part, but gonna be throwing the Falcor D2 and D1 for his big distance shots. And Drew Gibson, uh, always a creative thrower, going to use mix bag for the most part. EV7 Penrose is his primary putter and likes to throw eagles, scepters, the era. Uh, it's, it's always a wild card what you're going to get out of Drew. Hole one, let's start off with a little tailwind shot and a ton of open space, just under 500 feet coming from the stage. Hang it, hang it out wide right. Probably not going to get a whole lot of skip unless you're unless you hit the true From golf Green fairway. Junction, Colorado, Aaron Gossage. Hey. Right. Gossage shooting well last shooting well here last year. Uh, showing up, coming out, and getting on chase card for the second round. I'm sure he's going to be looking to make that push back to the lead card again. We can already see some shimmering on the arm there. <laughs> Get some glisten. Aaron gonna play Heiser release. Little bit of stand up, but mostly just pushing forward into the circle. Next Made it look easy, 500 feet. From, excuse me, Minocqua, Wisconsin, Adam Hammes. We've seen Adam several times on Gatekeeper Media's coverage this year already. Very proficient with both backhands and forehands. And uh, I like I like the look of his low ceiling shots for many of these tee shots. Yeah, he does have a bit of a lower release than you see from some players, which like you said, can help on the low ceiling shots. Gets this one out wide nicely. I'm gonna skip up and pretty much be underneath it. Don't hit your head. Let's take a look at this one again. You see the powerful gather and just slugging an overstable disc. Bases hole one. Next up from Turku, Finland, Vino Mekala. And wind about the same direction, but down a touch from what we saw in round one, making ideal scoring conditions. You see Vino deliberately projecting that elbow. He wants to make sure he leads with that. Works his body into it, and then very explosive. This one hung out too far wide right. And yeah. kind of a dead skip in the uh, first cut of and the golf fa this fairway. Foursome from Santan Valley, Arizona, Drew Gibson. Drew Gibson, originally from about an hour up the road. Not quite a home tournament for him, as he's uh, more identified with Arizona now. 
Yeah, we haven't seen him at all the events this year. He's kind of been picking and choosing which ones he'd like to play. Uh, gets a nice drive off here. Not too wide, but might be a bit inside. And because of that, he ends up catching a big skip. Probably going to be the farthest out there over in circle two. And note the un kind of unusual stance. Feet close together on the straddle. And wow. Nearly rings it up. Yeah, just a bit soft on that one, but a very good bid to start your round. Obvi obviously, you'd like to make it, but a good line to start. Vino, also a good line, able to jam in his birdie to start. And we've almost got two tap-ins from here. Not too far outside the bullseye. Nathan, I've got to imagine hole one is playing in the like easiest third of the course just because there's not that much danger to worry about. It Enemy is. Twos there and were, threes. Yeah, there were just, uh, just two bogeys today, so almost only twos and threes. 68% uh, of the field taking that par, so lots of threes. But we are going to get three twos here on our chase card. Moving into hole two, 744 foot par four. Uh, the basket placement of last year's hole one. Uh, but they've split that into two holes now. Very low ceiling shot. Uh, we, we might see some rollers to try to get some distance, but really a low line drive. Flat shot is going to get you your best distance here. And then a uh, tricky green to approach as well with lots of trees guarding the basket. And difficult to bite off more than 375 or so, even with these uh, strong forehand throwers leaving long approaches in. Little extra happy feet there for Hamas, huh? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, sometimes he just kind of rolls with it. Whatever he feels <laughs> like needs to happen, he lets it happen. And gets a nice shot off there. So we see Vino. Gonna see this a lot from him, making sure he's got that elbow out front like you, were, like you mentioned on hole one. And flippy disc on a cut roller. This is gonna push straight, but we'll need to curl before getting to the wood line and does sets up a similar shot or a straight backhand low ceiling for his second yeah i think i like that straight backhand on the right side gives you the best gap into the green a little less testy for those trees uh-oh and Gibson trying for a roller but you break it you buy it he's the proud owner of a new hyundai or something I'm sure he'll walk past that Hyundai or something pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this looks to be a great recovery shot. Yeah, going to have an opportunity to save. Uh, and that, Nathan, that's really big out here. Uh, the scoring separation at Swenson Park seems to happen when you overextend rather than playing disciplined, smart golf. Um, Gibson doesn't didn't try to do too much he just threw a good shot to give himself a chance and Aaron Gossage with an incredible second forehand shot here to give himself a chance for the birdie Adam Hammes looking to do the same now over stable skip in and inside the circle I know from the right side, going to try to follow the line and get the flare skip, but a little deader. He'll be in circle two. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess that right side isn't quite as open as I thought it was following that tree line down there. I know still going outside, uh, but end up 
gonna have to pitch up for the par now uh, which isn't really too bad on this hole this did play as the fourth most difficult on the course the 4.13 Pretty hard on the Pro Tour to make straight flat holes at 740 play over par, but they've done it here. They have 27% of the field carding a bogey or above as Adam Hammes pulls that putt just a bit off to the right side. Gonna want that one back. Could have started birdie birdie there. Yeah, that's a that's a good one to laugh at. Uh, his first one was a bit soft in a similar spot. That one had a lot more chains on it. Uh, good putt. Taking a bogey, though. A better comebacker for Adam Hammes. We're going to go back to par threes for a moment. Uh, it's par 35 on this front nine, so you need to be taking advantage of the par threes because there's going to be a lot of big distance to come. And Drew's going to show us exactly how it happened. Hole three, 358, par three. No real out of bounds to speak of. There's a right side that the drone is flying. We'll either see backhands thrown to try to skip um, I doubt that today we're going to see the outside left side turnover route. And if this beats the tree left or right, he's in good shape. And Gossage is backside of the circle. Yeah, I think ideally you'd like to fly inside to the left of that tree. Uh, but good shot nonetheless. He's up there. On the green, Adam Hammes is going to be able to move inside of that tree. Yeah, there's the flight line you're envisioning, right? Oh, yeah. And uh, we've seen a bit more skip from that little uh, dirt patch recently. Not that not that Adam is not in a good spot now. Uh, but, yeah, that's the flight I like to see here. A bit of a soft landing, small stand up inside of that tree. And Vino doesn't really brace on his front side, pops the disc up. And I, I like the reaction there. He uh, he knows this is a hole that you need to get. You're not gonna. You don't see that three to start many holes out here. No, definitely. Uh, this probably the third shortest, maybe. And at a minimum, you want to have a putt at it. Yeah, it so. is the th third easiest. <laughs> And pretty good recovery. We'll have about 15 feet for his comeback for three. And I heard a little oh. bit of wind noise in advance, but wow, wasn't expecting to sail over. Yeah, that picked up very quickly. Must have been a right to left. He's got a bit of a hyzer release on his putt and uh, just grabbed the bottom flight plate immediately. And gonna end up with a three putt for a bogey here. You never want a bogey, but you really don't want a bogey here on hole three. And Drew, always a little bit of a showman. A good scramble there for Vino. Clearly not what you want to happen, but uh, did what you have to do to move on without any damage done. All right, and Adam Hammes, again a little bit weak side left, but able to stick it for his bird.
The Trilogy Challenge is back, y'all. My favorite putter, which is the Retro Orbit Pure. Mine will be a Tournament Ice Orbit Warship. And the driver for the Trilogy Challenge is my signature series, Fusion Ice Orbit Vandal. Are you ready to hit the course with these three discs for the Trilogy Challenge? I hope you are. If you need more uh, information, then go check out uh, TrilogyChallenge.com. Trilogy Challenge 2023, be there. Hole 4, 1171 feet, got a low ceiling you've got to hit here, you might see some rollers to try to get some big distance, there's a mando on the right that you have to stay left of, avoid this ball golf green, and there's some OB on the right, to the right of that ball golf green as well, before you make this dog leg off to the right, uh, very long, lots of different obstacles to avoid on this hole. And uh, another one that's difficult to get a ton of distance on off of the tee shot. This cut roller seems to be a pretty popular play. And works his way back to the right, so he will have a clean shot for his second. Gibson going to do the same with a flippier disc. Oh, wow. And that is tracking pretty far right. Even though it is safe, he's going to have a weird angle. Yeah, it might be one of those trying to throw over top of that kind of OB shelter building area over there. And Vino actually hits the Mando tree. Does stay safe, but a lot of work to do has only made about 200, 250 feet, and I like the look of this. More overstable, and runs out to the fairway. He has a host of options from that spot. Yeah, we've seen a couple big forehands from him. We could see that, or another roller. Vino gonna have to go with another roller. Hopefully this is a flippy disc. Continuing to track left. The fence is out of bounds. And the green is out of bounds, but I think he's stayed safe. And as we do see Gossage going with another roller here, gets around that tree, curls up very nicely, just missing a golf cart. I bet I'm confident the golf cart didn't think he was in play at all. <laughs> Only about 250 left into the bucket for Gossage. And Hamas going to try to follow that. But Alas is going to roll up a tree, leaving him about 450 or so. So Drew also going roller from way over on that right side. Puts himself in a pretty good spot, I think, in that 300 range, 320. And Vino's third, going back to the roller. I apologize in advance to viewers who can't really tell where we're going. Uh, this is, as we noted at Jonesboro, the kind of hole where you can be 300 feet away from your card mates equally, or with equally good shots or good looks. Yeah, and, and <laughs> Vino, unfortunately, has not quite had those good shots or good looks. He is He does seem to be about 250 away from the pin now, trying to get up and down for his par. Adam, did he get up there around circle two? I couldn't quite tell. Yeah, it sure looked like the tree on the, at circle's edge is what caught him up, so he'll have an opportunity for his four. Gibson trying to play the low ceiling backhand, but uh, throws it into the ground. This is a shot that Gossage worked on quite a bit over the offseason. Not really a mid-range guy, but well executed and a little bit of ground play to, to boot. Yeah, it worked out for him that time. This can be a big hole for Gossage uh, after that kind of Silly bogey that he took on the last hole. 
Uh, this could be a good bounce back hole to maybe get his round going again. Zvino is able to get up and down there pretty well, almost just skipping it in. And Gibson quickly playing his fourth. This is Adam Hammes for birdie and too high. There it is. Count the bounce back stat. Gets him to one down. And Vino, left side. That, look, that one looked pretty good to me. Gibson able to card the par. Nathan, uh, I don't really care for the bounce back stat, or at least the premise it requires to bounce back. Yeah, well, yeah, you never want to take a bogey. <laughs> <laughs> Hole 5, 589 feet, par 4. That truss is not a mandatory. Uh, you will either see straight, low ceiling shots, or rollers through the tree line, possibly some out and around Anheuser backhands. Uh, potentially an eagle bull hole. And there is out of bounds to the left and right, but you have to go pretty far left and pretty far right to find it. Aaron choosing that straight up the middle gap, executes it very well, gets past that first tree line, should have a fairly easy upshot to try to get his birdie. Adam Hammes going to play the big Anheuser. We'll need it to flex and flatten, but ends up out of bounds. Left side. Damn it. Yeah, flex out too much. And this is still... I don't quite understand the aggressive play on this hole. I know we've heard rumors and stories of, some, of one or two people possibly getting it in practice. That's not enough for me to go for that shot, and we've seen too many people go OB because of it. Yeah, I think the more shots I've seen on it and played, the more I'm realizing that all you should do is throw an adequate tee shot and you'll be in a pro's manageable distance to get up and down for birdie. Absolutely. Tied for the easiest hole on the course today. Great shot. And wow. Gorgeous shot by Vino. Just a little scooch past the basket. That should be easy pickings for his birdie. Gibson, note how many times he's going to backhands. He's not really going to mess with forehand shots very much right now. I think he's still dealing with a little bit of arm soreness. And with how tall the trees are and how they've designed the course to make it awkward to go over top, we don't see that too much. And he does end up coming up short catching some of those tall trees. Mm. And Hamas kind of missing some opportunities. Hey. Nicely done. Hamas kind of missing some opportunities early in the round and now fixing to take a bogey on one of the easiest. Uh, not how not how you draw it up since the front is where the scoring needs to get done. Yeah, definitely so. As Drew also coming up a bit short on the upshot, leaves himself a very difficult putt having to go underneath that branch. Aaron Gossage playing the hole up the middle had a very easy stress-free sidearm approach shot. And uh, able to card back-to-back -back birdies now. Very deliberate here for Vino. And this one online and in. Although we don't like the premise of it, there is another bounce back there. It's him <laughs> to one under par on the round. Uh, 
yeah, all of our players kind of not quite stacking up where they want to just yet. Sitting at that even, even to two under, all with some red on the scorecard. You don't want much red out here on moving day. But I think uh, in order to score out here, you need to be aggressive. So bogeys are going to happen at some point. That brings us into hole six. Another hole that you don't want to bogey at as it, as it is tied with hole five as the easiest hole on the course today. Uh, par 5,006 feet. Again, playing across these ball golf fairways. So you want to get through these tree lines. If you can get through the second tree line, off of your tee shot that's going to give you a great opportunity to have a couple easy shots to get the birdie and Gossage lays down a cut roller he's making the spotter still move oh my Makes goodness our catch cam turn around it's still going and still staying on cut Good that's a hundred that's a hundred feet past catch cam we were told 650 was the official distance and look at this turning the whole way to the ground, but overstable enough to stay on cut. What an incredible drive here from Aaron Gossage. Going to give himself an opportunity to possibly card an eagle here on hole six. Wow. Do you, do you like to follow up shots like that? I mean, if I'm throwing the same kind of roller, I think I would get a very good wind read off of what's happening. Knowing that I can keep it on cut for a long time uh, is really nice since there's so much open space to work with. So yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that. <coughs> and as you see, Vino does keep it on cut for quite a while. Doesn't get that late stand up though. Still a great tee shot. Ends up over a bit on the left. Gibson showing us, us another option. Heiser flip, up the gut, and punches through a little bit, and that's still a totally fine shot for a birdie position. Yeah, definitely so. That's at that second tree line that I was talking about. Adam, this is pretty low, but overstable enough if it gets some edge, as it does will run to the second tree line. And gonna play another overstable backhand, cuts through the second tree line, I'm th or the third tree line, excuse me. I think that should leave around 250 in. Yeah, great second shot, and I don't think he's gonna have much in the way either. Should be a fairly open approach. And a big grunt out of Drew here, getting a very wide, huge turnover around these trees. It sounds like it's just caught the edge of the last one, falls down short. That was going to be a huge shot. Absolutely. Enough airspace to make it work, and at a thousand feet, uh, you know, that's something Gibson thinks of in two shots. Fino, a pretty credible attempt. He'll have to have to uh, throw a pitch up to get his birdie. Dude, you're gonna do that too, man. Ah! Oh, and yeah, showing a bit of frustration there, really wanting to capitalize on that incredible drive that we saw. And he looks like he's rushing this a little bit to me, Nathan. Could have been. Nonetheless, looks like he throws a pretty good shot. Still talking about it in the background to Jeff Corns. Gibson, standstill putter shot, and basically throws it with his wrist. This does need to check up, and does. There is a green behind that uh, kind of runs away if you don't have good speed control. Every time I've looked at Vino so far, all I can think of is Tennessee Volunteers. I would give you good odds that that is not what he was going for. 
Right. I, I agree with that also. <laughs> <laughs> but that is where that is where my mind goes with that with that shirt he's got. And uh, we're gonna have four putts inside the circle now. Aaron trying to get a turkey. And weird to say good recovery after a 640 foot drive. Um, but that second shot didn't go very far, so. <laughs> All right, Hamas in. And you hear in the background some, uh, some crowd cheering. They've done a really good job here for the OTB Open of giving spectators an opportunity to see several holes at once. And uh, it was a little bit of a rowdy crowd out here on one of the peninsulas. Can imagine so. A lot to be rowdy about. Best players in the world out here throwing some amazing shots. Uh, speaking of amazing shots, Cody Kirkland able to card the eagle on hole six today from inside circle one, our first eagle on the weekend. Congratulations. We've also got our first diamond. Another of the few that has a three as the first digit, 364 feet, par three. Out of bounds water to the right. There's a green long and left, and playing into a little bit of a headwind here. This forehand is a very good play to keep it over land the entire way. Backhands have to contend with some pompous grass on the right that is out of bounds. It looks like there could be some left to right wind today to push you towards that OB, but Aaron Gossage is gonna find that green flag. Fino, this is just pure overstability. Pretty decent shot to, looks like circle's edge. We got a world's okayest disc golfer sighting in the background. Good to see him out here. That's a tough field, isn't it? <laughs> I hear it is. Everybody's giving that one a run. <laughs> As Drew Gibson ends up finding some out of bounds over there on the right side. See where he ends up with the spot at if he's got a chance for a par or not. And Hamas yanks it. Yanks it too far left. You hear Gibson saying he's going to call a provisional in the event that he does receive a mark at the far side of the pompous grass. And Good recovery very by Hamas. Yeah, sorry, very smart play there by Drew uh, just to make sure pace of play stays up. It looks like he did get an opportunity to save his par, but kind of come up just short. And a nice. great stick by Fino Makala. Straddles out to the right. Good lower body action. Yeah, a good 45-footer for the gatekeeper rewind and to get himself a turkey now on the round and to three under par. And Gossett's going to do a little wind check after the fact. Sorry, buddy. Doesn't change the miss. <laughs> Somebody uh, down there contemplating their round earlier on, maybe. Sitting, looking out over the water. <coughs> Brings us into hole eight, a very difficult par four, 828 feet. You gotta get up to the left a little bit off of the tee pad. You're gonna have an OB ball golf green and hazard out in front of the basket. 
Oh, just another one that seems difficult to get that distance on. Yeah, setting with the low ceiling, setting yourself up for the second shot that's a makeable distance is, uh, is the challenge. Fino has stuck himself on a tree, so I'm thinking that's four at best. Yeah, and if you do get past this tree line and get to the left out in the open, uh, which Aaron has not been able to do either, then if you haven't pushed extremely far down the fairway, then you really play safe off to the left side, making it difficult to stick the green and really attack for the birdie because you don't want to go OB on that ball golf green. Ham is playing force. Everybody's trying to keep it pretty low to avoid the ceiling. There is a right to left wind that you would hope can pick you up, but nobody's gotten left enough. Gibson tried, but squares up a tree and is also stuck kind of in the middle. Aaron Gossage with the forehand. And that's, that's a very good shot to set up an easy four. I know it looks like he's pretty pinched with this tree right here. Always makes you feel a bit awkward when you have to try to make sure you're not going to hit your hand or you're trying to torque your body to throw a shot away from a tree, but he throws a great roller. It looks like he made it all the way up into circle two there. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, he kind of threw directly at a bunker and was able to avoid it and the green. Gibson from about 425. Low ceiling what? hyzer flip. Wow. Yeah, I don't... Um, that's great that that disc even stood up to flat with how much hyzer he put on that and how little effort it looked like he had to use. Just flies out of his hand as uh, Adam Hammes gets that one up a bit high and drops down short after catching some branches. Should be able to get up and down here for a tap in, and uh, he's done so. Putting together a pretty good reel of Adam Hammes's touch with a forehand zone. And Fino for the rare birdie. Is that four in a row for him? It is, and a great hole to get it on. Uh, this hole just barely averaging under par to 4.96. And I, I doubt there were many birdies with that second roller shot like that. That was a big scramble. You say 4.96? 3.96? Uh, yes, 3.96. Yeah, okay. I think there's a universe where this is a pretty fair par 5. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, back there with the world's okayest disc golfer. Yeah, exactly. And Gibson from just outside Bullseye. Nicely done. He is now under par also. Great to see. And hole nine. We have the suggestion of a dog leg after an out of bounds carry. Work your way into the middle of this tree line and then a water carry to an elevated basket. Everything on this far side is safe and I think it's critical to get yourself across in two shots. You don't want to be short having to throw your 200 foot approach as your third. I know, going to make it across this OB right here pretty easily and keep that disc very straight. Uh, should give him a pretty attackable shot into the green, maybe that 350 range. Yes, absolutely. And a really good wind read. This is playing into a sneaky headwind that kind of comes around a blind corner. The tendency is to fade too far left or uh, square up one of the one of the trees that are twinned together in the landing zone. Gossage, this is kind of burned over. If it stays high. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's, uh, that was OB for quite a while on the ground. That's pretty impressive that he is inbounds over there. 
Yeah, Gossage just found a stroke and a half lying on the ground. Put it in your pocket and save it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Adam ends up just a bit high there. Gonna be a long shot here to attack the basket. Yeah, this is absolutely fairway driver distance. Big rip, holding straight, and backside of the circle. That's so excellent. We see Drew a little bit closer, gonna go with the mid range. A bit on the low side, and he catches those reeds. Maybe five feet to the left or three feet higher, he's gonna be in a pretty good spot. Now looking at a bogey at best. Aaron Gossage, single angle forehand out there to just outside bullseye. Yeah, I haven't seen too many forehands into this green. I like that, especially from where he was at. Looked wide open, and that single angle is a big part of that. I like that. Definitely. I think a lot of that is because with right-hand backhand players, you're liable to end up more to the left, which would make you have to throw a flex forehand or a more natural hyzer backhand. Gibson's fourth, pitching across. Good speed control there. Wait. 540? I thought that fell in. I'm confused. Oh, I'm sorry. It flopped out, and then Vino did a 540. <laughs> oh, and Adam, just a bit soft. I know the feeling very well of that disc bouncing off the top of the cage. That's <laughs> not the best, as, um, as we see Drew kind of pull his off to the right side there also. This is, uh, got Gossage trying to fix this basket here. He's watched a lot happen so far. He's trying to put that all out and center it. And barely squeaks it in right side. But a good birdie moving him to four down after nine holes and in a tie for second place, Nathan. Yeah, probably not quite the way he wanted to start, but has worked his way back nicely to four under par through this front nine. I think we were saying five or six is kind of where you want to be at. Yeah, uh, but tied for second, you know, you can't argue with that. No, and Vino did the same, uh, just with some later hot streak in there. Isaac Robinson at uh, 15 under, and I, I guess more correctly, we've got a tie for fourth place. Um, we are so excited that you joined us for the front nine of round two at the OTB Open. We're halfway home, and we certainly hope you'll join us on the back. For Nathan Queen, I'm Andrew Fish. And we'll see you guys out there.